everyone, it's Alyssa coming at you with another slow fashion video. This week, still adding to the new place, and I've been recording myself as I scour Facebook Marketplace and Kijiji. But in the meantime, really, I really wanted to talk about layering. Not just because it's getting cold where I am, but because layering is one of those techniques that you've heard me mention often in my Outfit Envy videos. That's because it is one of the easiest ways to revamp and stretch what's already in your closet without having to go and buy things. So it's a great thing to do, especially if you're trying to keep your closet more minimal. I also love it because it keeps me super warm and I live in Canada, so that's pretty essential. But what I've tried to do in this video is really break down the principles of layering so that it doesn't matter what season you're going into, what climate you live in, or even what type of wardrobe or style personality you have. So hopefully these are tips that we can all use. Before we jump in, for those of you who are new, welcome. Every week I talk about slow fashion with a heavy focus on the principles of minimalism. So using and loving what you already have and making smart shopping decisions so that you can create a closet full of pieces that you actually love and wear. So if that sounds like your jam, hit subscribe below. I post every Sunday. And for those of you coming back, big hello to you. Thank you so, so much for watching. So I've already explained why I love layering. It's especially great because it can work in every situation. Going to work, going out on the weekend, first dates, whatever. So let's just jump right in. Knowing your volume. What I mean by that is that your first basic layer, whether it's spring, fall, winter, should be your tightest and lightest layer. Unless you're going for a look that is very high fashion and structural, you'll typically be most comfortable if your first layer is light because that means you can kind of tuck it and manipulate it a little bit better. Then as you add layers, those are the ones that should have a little bit more volume and give so that they can compensate for whatever you've got underneath without being uncomfortable. And this applies to both summer and winter. So in the summer, this could be example, a nice light slip dress. And in the winter, we could be talking about like a really nice lightweight turtleneck. So for example, I could totally wear my nice super thin merino turtleneck underneath this tight sheath dress. However, by the end of the day, I'm not gonna lie, this look is pretty tight. I could probably handle wearing it all day, but a more comfortable option that still gives off the kind of fun styling effect of layering would be if I put on a sweater that was a little bit more loose over the dress. The fun thing about doing this is that I could just, I can add a little belt and make it look a little bit more like separates. And then for example, on top of that dress and sweater combo, I could add a coat that has a little bit more of a boxy structure like this one so that I'm not too constricted. So as you layer, your proportions should get a little bit roomier. Okay, so when I say go sleeveless, what I mean isn't necessarily just using tank tops as layers, but really paying attention to using sleeveless collared blouses or shirts or sleeveless turtlenecks and vests. These are all super key for when you wanna add major layers. I'm talking like three or four even. What I love about these sleeveless pieces is that they're still interesting enough to show that you're wearing an interesting layer and add that dimension that you're looking for without totally losing the mobility of your arms. Because let's be real, that happens if you're wearing like five long sleeve shirts. I don't own a short sleeve turtleneck or a short sleeve blouse, but let's pretend for the sake of this example that my turtleneck is sleeveless. I would throw that underneath a long sleeve collared shirt and then put a blazer on top. That's three layers, but really I only have to deal with two around my arms. If you really wanna go heavy on the layers, then you could even throw a vest on top of this, which brings me to loving vests. These come in particularly handy for the winter as an extra layer of warmth underneath one of your jackets or coats. I do this very often. I even have a real repurposed vintage fur vest. I love how the texture peeks out from underneath my jacket. And again, it means I don't have to wear bulky things underneath to keep warm. I could wear perhaps a nice light blouse, but because I've got that vest as my outerwear to keep me warm and to add a little bit of interest, I have so much more flexibility in my look. 
heard me use this mixing and matching the functionality of your clothes in my how to get out of a style rep video, but I think this also can help you come up with layering options if you're feeling stuck. So this would be very similar to layering a very cozy, comfy, roomy sweater over a dress. And in the summertime, this could mean perhaps a super casual cotton t-shirt underneath a sleeveless silk dress. If you're having trouble mixing and matching what prints or colors go together with all of your layers, it's really fun to stick to one color. Making sure that your layers are all in one color is also a great trick for the ladies who don't want to add more volume or bulk to their frame. Because all of your layers are going to be in one color, it's really still keeping the eye visually focused on just one item and not going between all of those different layers, which can look bulkier. Texture is another little styling hack to, keep, hack to keep in mind. I've talked about this a lot in some of my Outfit Envy videos because it just adds so much interest. Using texture might be as simple as pairing sequins with leather. That's only two layers, but because of that great contrast in textures, it looks a lot more interesting. Layering textures is also a really fun opportunity to perhaps layer pieces that you would have never thought of putting together before. For example, maybe you have a really neat crochet sweater or cardigan that you would normally wear in the summer. Throw it on top of perhaps a long sleeve top in the winter and that really accentuates the texture of the crochet. Long layers are fabulous for those of us who are trying to camouflage a tummy or a larger or heavier middle or even for pear-shaped ladies or for petite women who want to look taller because it really draws our eye into this vertical line. And these long layers can be achieved so easily. Sometimes it can just mean wearing a simple button-up blouse open with a camisole or a turtleneck underneath, depending on what season you're in. Or it can even be as simple as adding a nice long scarf and not even tying it, just leaving it loosely hanging down your neck. Even if you're layering one scarf on top of a shirt, that counts as layering in my book. And it's also a great one for anyone who runs really warm and gets way too hot by wearing too many layers. Just make sure the scarf is like a silk or a lighter material that won't get you too hot. I love scarves. I really do. I can't talk about them enough. This one is the opposite of monochrome. Take a piece that is a total contrast to whatever your base layer is. This could be a contrasting print or a totally contrasting color. It could even be as simple as black and white. Layering doesn't have to be complicated. And like texture, if you're using contrast, it almost makes it look like you're layering more than you actually are. So that is what I have for you today. I hope you liked the video. If you've got a layering hack or technique that I didn't mention, please put it in the comments below and share so that we can all learn. Um, I'm always learning. But I hope you liked the video. Think I already said that. Like this video, hit subscribe if you haven't already, and I will be back next week with another slow fashion video. Have a great week and thank you for watching. Ciao!